Polymorph. Program three, Polymorph. Polymorph. A contender for the best ever, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, in the, uh, <laughs> the fan club convention in um, Gatwick, uh, Hilton, was it? I can't remember. Yes, um, yes. The uh, a poll was taken. God, the glamour of it all. The right. glamour of it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Was, <laughs> as I got out of my mini moke in the car park, <laughs> I thought, yes, this is it. I've arrived as the <coughs> banner fluttered to the ground. Right. Um, yes, if you recall, we did a, a poll there. The most... Uh, the, the it was the funniest scene, actually. Funniest scene. Funniest yes, scene, funniest scene ever. I think it was without doubt the funniest scene And it ever. came from Polymorph. That's quite a... Mm. And there's a look attached to that, I think. Because yes. when we wrote the scene with the groinal attachment, which is well, actually, it wasn't it. actually going to go into his groin. No, it was going into his chest. It was going to go into his chest. And Howard said, "Oh, look where I put the uh, was it even called the groinal attachment then? It, it was his no, it was his vacuum hose. Look vacuum where I put it, yeah. and it was on. Oh, Howard, that's <laughs> so cheap. And it's just you know, we're a little bit cleverer than that. But oh, there's no time to move it. That's right." And then we played the scene, and I'd completely forgotten he, he still had it attached <laughs> to him, mm. to his groin. And mm. so it then had this huge, great vac hose stretching across the sleeping quarters. Um, and You didn't come to rehearsals then? Uh. No, no, no. I mean, <laughs> yes. But on screen, it's just that mm. it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it, works, it works well. I remember offlining it around at your house. Yeah. I know. We were offlining it around. My, my mother, for some reason, was staying because she's looking after, my, uh, <laughs> looking after our son. And she came in to see the section where it appears that, without ruining it for you, that um, a Crichton appears to be um, trying to get uh, Lister's trousers off and have sex with him. And uh, she's, I remember her saying, as long as it's funny, it doesn't matter if it's rude. But and she looked at the screen and I went, <laughs> let's get a pizza. Uh, and I, I remember uh, Ed Wooden, the editor at the time, mm. who's, you know, in many ways a terrible prude. And he in was. In many other ways, not a terrible prude, but mm. he, he was very prudish about this scene and he, he just thought he was offended. Absolutely it appalled, okay. which made me <laughs> even more hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> and I was sent off to get the pizzas, <laughs> which was involved a 10 minute walk, and I mm. laughed all the way to the pizza house and laughed all the way back That's again. Right. Yeah, but you quiet. always did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just. Oh dear. It so was, it was, yeah, and we had actually on the night when that scene was being recorded. You know, everything stopped. Everything stopped. Well, you couldn't I, hear. Um, you couldn't hear no, anybody couldn't. saying any lines. Well, I've directed several hundred shows now, and I've never had a situation with an audience where they'd gone so bananas that you couldn't hear what was going on, you couldn't tell what was happening. The whole thing broke down. <coughs> so we just fired off shots until they stopped screaming. Mm. Um, Chris just stood still and just carried on looking angry. Bless his heart for about twenty minutes <laughs> while all this was happening. He did what a pro. And he there was, was a lot of good grovelling around and groinal business yeah. on the floor. It was an extraordinary scene to shoot. Also, I think that scene involves I think one of the the greatest props uh, that mm. the series has ever featured, which uh, it was this, was the python. No, not the python. Now, if you look very yeah. carefully, you can tell <laughs> actually there are two different pythons in that yes. scene. One is a real python, and another one is. Um, it's sort of you know, like Helen Keller could tell. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I remember Donna I think you're saying... giving away professional secrets here. There's a lot of people who think that snake round Crichton and the one that goes into the laundry bin are one and the same. Saying, Donna, the snake will look the same as a real python, won't it? And she said, it's a dead ringer. It's a dead ringer. And then you think, well, how could it be a dead ringer when you haven't actually seen the, the real live python? Mm. And we had to cut it in two, didn't we? Because it was uh, about 25 feet originally. Yeah, the live one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was she and the wrong colour and wrong colour and didn't look like a python. Well, it was a big piece of material with a boingy spring in it, wasn't it, with a head on the front? It was, yeah. However, <laughs> it was. <laughs> however, <laughs> how how can that happen? However, having how said that, how can that happen? <laughs> well, it, I think it was great and I liked it, and the way that Craig manipulated it into the you laundry said basket we'll was make special. You work in the edit. Yes. That's what you've always said. <laughs> yeah, I've always said that. <laughs> and then when it doesn't work in the edit, I'd always say, it'll work in the dub. Yeah, <laughs> and, then, Great. and then I just don't turn up to the <laughs> Yeah. Now, a very complex show to shoot because the polymorph creature itself, it all had to be shot in chroma key. And yes. this was the first time, I think, I'd ever done a double chroma key mat, which is where you shot the monster. Getting technical now. Getting yeah. technical now. Right. Where you shoot the monster against blue and manipulate him to charge about and then shoot the... Uh, the, the actors on blue 
and then shot the set and matched all three together in one go. And in those days, what you used to have to do is run all the tapes and try and push them all together in, on the day. And oh, yeah, uh, yeah. it yeah. came out with this excellent shot, which then featured in the opening title, where they're pressing on a door button. That's right. Mm. And then the, the creature rises up behind yeah. them. And that was shot in three different yeah. sections put together, which in those days was quite tough to do. And there was an animatronic polymorph as well. That was the first mm. animatronics we ever mm. used. Yeah, mm. and uh, the last, I think. <laughs> yes, the last. <laughs> yeah. yeah, They're it's not very good, are they? <laughs> I, th I was more convinced by the snake. I was mm. to say it in the workshop when it was being made, and it looked like, oh my God, this is going to be so fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it looked fantastic. The only trouble is, all it could do is fall over. Yes. But apart from that. And it needed 10 people to make it do that, didn't it? <laughs> it no, did. I think. <laughs> <laughs> people crouching all over the place. I know. You yeah. can shoot like just this bit. This is very thing. unfair. It's excellent polymorph, and his lip curling business was oh, great. Oh, yes, it's great. Yeah, right. yeah no, it's did a better lot than Elvis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember the. Um, <laughs> Also, the the laser bolt sequence. We were getting really ambitious with our yeah, effects yeah, there, yeah. and uh, oh, we actually yeah. shot that before the, mm. the rest of the series was, mm. it was filming in in Liverpool. Mm. For some yeah, reason, yeah, that's correct. With and 150 quid worth of cardboard boxes, mm. Mm. was it that much? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And yeah. I just seen, <laughs> I just seen Raiders of the Lost Ark, and I remember saying to you, "Don't worry, boys." In the edit, this will look like the big shot at the end of Red's Lost Ark, <laughs> where you have this long, long corridor of lots and lots of boxes. And, Jeez, uh, and it just looked like a corridor with some boxes. <laughs> and that was it. And but that, that will make it work in the dub. Mm. <laughs> and then I, once again, didn't turn up to the dub. <laughs> but uh, Polymorph, yes, it had the laser bolts, it had the, the creature itself. We also had um, a lock-off sequence where Polymorph changes into about 70 different things. And uh, I spent, oh, about, yes. I spent yeah. about four <laughs> hours on that and then about 10 minutes on uh, Kevin, the young Kevin. polymorph who had a camera <laughs> inserted into his mouth Kevin. and was right, scuttling those, around those the those studio cameras. floor. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And uh, so there was a lot of sort of experimentation the, in the show, which sort of worked, I think. The, the, here's a, here's a, a little insight there for, for anyone who cares to know. Uh, the, the voice of Kevin, the young polymorph, was, was Mike Agnew, wasn't it? Was it really? Could well have been. Mike Agnew, the, the could could well have been. Floor manager. That's a good, mm. a good, good. Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this Anorak. particular show <laughs> features my favourite prop, and still is amongst. I showed it to a seven-year-old. More than the snake. More than the snake. The killer kebab. The killer. Now, hey, now you're that talking. That was animatronics that worked. Yeah, yeah now that was that a killer. special prop. <laughs> that was. That and was fantastic. For all those people who who have. Who would like to know how that was done? We did it backwards. Thank you. That's all I can say. Yeah, I'm, I'm that on secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Very serious secrets. Yeah. The way it just sort of curled a bit. But it curled around <laughs> a bit. It, yeah. Yes, it was spectacular. It curled a bit, didn't it? Oh. Series three, as a whole, is. Um, that's when uh, we got some real good producers on it. <laughs> yeah, for a change. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Rose. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Some heavyweights moved in. And we, we got that. rid of uh, a lot of the cardboard, <laughs> except for the boxes. <laughs> 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 but we got rid of uh, the grey sets, didn't we? And, uh, yes. yeah. and it was allowed, a new allowed new John costume. Pomfrey to, to do his light and stuff. Which, yeah. Which, yeah. Which he was great at. Yeah, new costume, new costume designer, Howard Burden. Yeah. And that silly ca <laughs> Captain Scarlet green hat for Chris, which I never really was happy with. That was in, though. That was first introduced, wasn't yeah, it? Yes, that yeah, was I remember that in backwards. And yeah. I couldn't make up my mind about whether, it <laughs> whether we should have that. No, I think the answer was no, we <laughs> no, shouldn't. It was in retrospect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But yes, so, without a doubt, Series 2 is a big leap forward. Mm. Well, we started to be able to afford, you know, like mm. two guest stars a show. And, mm. uh, oh, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, of course, by that stage, I've only got used to directing four people, and then suddenly brought other people in, and I was yeah. thrown. Yeah. And we did get out and about more, didn't we? I mean, there was a tiny bit in series two, nothing at all in series one, but we were able to do all that backwards stuff. And um, yes, yeah, so and the scene in the um, when he says out and about, he means out of the studio. Robert, yeah, Robert the Llewellyn's studio. first ever experience of Red Dwarf, mm. which was uh, at an hotel in uh, in Manchester, and the. He didn't even have the right voice then, and mm. he he just signed up, and he'd been up in Edinburgh, and he came down for um, the pre-film mm. sequence, mm. and his first sequence was in a um, indoor heated swimming pool. 
and I hit it swimming pool. Which was boiling. I mean, it was boiling. He didn't know at that point how hot the costume mm. was anyway. No, he didn't. And he had... He does now. <laughs> he had a one sequence. <laughs> <laughs> really does now. One se- the sequence was he flipped open his thumb and lit a cigarette, a cigar for Craig, in, in, who was sitting in the jacuzzi. And he kept some short seats. <laughs> He did his work, and when he did, he caught fire. <laughs> and and he was one. just he just thought, what have I let myself in for? He A nearly one. died that day. Yeah, he he, he lost, did. you know, like three stones so of water. He was yeah. so upset about it that he wrote a book. <laughs> yeah. he, wrote, he, wrote, he, still he wrote a book about, about it. it. <laughs> and still, and and still yeah. writing pamphlets and handing them out <laughs> in the street. And how angry he was about that <laughs> as we speak. In fact, yes. And it was cut out, wasn't it? It was cut out. Because yeah. <laughs> the voice wasn't right. It wasn't. And yeah. He was crap. He looked like he was a bit <laughs> hot. He was all hot and his thumb wouldn't work. And interestingly, we cut that sequence and then the gas advert started where everybody's thumb That's right. And and that's what it was body swap, was it? Body swap, yes, it was body it was swap, body wasn't swap. it? Right. 